Afternoon, Dee. Afternoon. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. Congrats, first of all, on the Manager of the Month Award. Uh, one of the best in your, in your coaching career so far? Yes, but it should be Head Coach of the Month Award rather than Manager. Um, controversial. Yeah, very controversial, but you know that's my title here. So, no, really pleased. It's, it's not just my award, obviously. It's a, it's a staff award that goes for players as well without them and the backroom team. You know, all of them, you, you don't win awards like that. So, uh, very pleasing to get it. Um, you know, there'll be a lot of talk about the curse of it, but I knew a week ago and we've won two games this month already. So, um, I think we can put that to bed. Yeah, like you said, seven in a row now. Did you always believe a run like this was around the corner, even in those tough times in January, February? I just felt with the quality of the players that, that we've got and the ones who were out and the ones that were coming back and the ones that were brought in in January would, would strengthen us. And uh, I think that's been the case for, for all to see. I think performance levels have been really good. We've got some really qual quality players and they're performing you know, on the stage that, that matters at the moment. The moments like your press are being interrupted by Twan Zabi Chance uh, on Wednesday just show the spirit within this team at the minute. I, I've spoke before about the, the togetherness that the group have got. Um, you know, there's some really tight bonds there. Um, you know, I, I spoke about Jack and John McG McGinn before. You know, they're thick as thieves, but the whole dressing room is a real tight knit dressing room, and uh, you know they were singing their hearts out after the game. And um, you know, hopefully we can go and continue the run now. Likewise, Tyrone Mings, it was obviously a bad individual night for him, but he was there at the whistle celebrating, just like everybody else. Yeah, no, it's, that's a really good thing to see. You know, uh, we, we spoke quite a lot about Tammy, Tammy Abraham as a, as a lone E coming in and, you know, uh, the love that he seems to have got for the, for the football club. And then you see the likes of Courtney Howes and, and then Tyrone, he got sent off on, on Wednesday night and then he's out celebrating with the rest of the players. And um, it's that camaraderie, you know, that... Uh, shows that the culture here is quite right when you've got you know, uh, lone players coming into the football club and, and feeling that special bond straight away. That second goal on Wednesday, where does that rank in terms of ones we've scored this season? Oh, it, was, it was up there. I mean, you know, a great little bit of skill from Jack with the 1-2 with Neil Taylor first and foremost. Um, you know, and then I'm not sure Jack knew that Elmo was going to cut it back straight away, but it was a great run from Jack and a great cut back from Elmo. So... Yeah, he's, uh, he's scored some really good goals and that was up there. You mentioned Tyrone, obviously he's going to be missing. How is uh, Courtney progressing? Is he <coughs> going to be available for this weekend? He's going to struggle. Um, you know, I'll leave it till as late as possible, but he, he, it's looking doubtful at the moment. But uh, I want to have a look at him in the morning. Uh, he's got a hip flexor problem, which you know can affect the abdominal side of it. But um, you know, if not, we've got people who can who can go in and play there, like Mille showed on on Wednesday evening. And there are any of the other defenders coming back, Hutton, Chester, Elphick, or was it too soon? Uh, Hutton's trained um, for the last 10 days or week, week or so, so he's available for selection. Tommy Elphick has trained, probably not near enough to, uh, to be involved. Um, you know, and that's about it at the moment. And quickly on Lovray Kalinic, how's he getting on? Yeah, he had a, an operation um, just to tidy up uh, the cartilage that had uh, just flapped open a little bit um, but he's up walking around already and we're expecting him to be back in the next 10 days or so so it was one that we wanted to get done very quickly he came back off international duty uh, had a scan and you know we, we saw that he had a little bit of cartilage problems so they dealt with it very quickly and you know thankfully he should be back in the next 10 days. And you mentioned on Wednesday not just selection now but also <coughs> tactical headaches after Codger's performance uh, how much of a, a headache is he going to give you? Oh yeah I mean he's, I thought his performance for 45 minutes was, was excellent and he gave us what we wanted and just what we needed at that time um, you know him and Tammy kept the ball in the opposition half and uh, you know, he got his goal as well and uh, put in a real tireless effort. So, yeah, it's given me a problem. You mentioned Mele and Glenn as two of the hardest trainers. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into what they're like around the place? Yeah, I mean, you know, day to day, they're the ones that, that drive the standards for the rest of the group. Um, you know, we're, we've got some really good young players. Uh, we've brought some younger players in on loan as well and they're looking up to the likes of Mele and, and Glenn. Their work ethic, uh, you know, from the start of, of the warm-up to the end of training, they're always at the front looking to drive the others on. And uh, it's something you, that you need. They're more senior players, the experienced ones who, you know, fully-fledged internationals who play in the Premier League, 
still showing the others you know, how to train and perform to get better. Five games to go. How crucial that three of those are at home? Yeah, very crucial. I mean, um, Villa Park, as everybody knows, is a special place, um, you know, especially when it's full to the rafters, as it will be tomorrow. <coughs> um, we're very hard to beat there. Um, we're starting to win a lot of football games there. We probably didn't win as many as we would have liked in that period, end of, Jan end of December, January. Um, but we're starting to, to do that now, and uh, we want that to continue and give the, the fans something to shout about. Yeah, you mentioned it was a sellout. I think it's going to be the same for all home and away allocations from now until the end. How much does that help players and staff? No, I mean, you just look at the, the, the last week, there's been over 7,000 of our fans in South Yorkshire, you know, um, going and following us against Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham United and the backing we've got has been incredible. And, um, you know, it will certainly be the same tomorrow at Villa Park where they'll get fully behind us. On the pitch, what kind of game do you expect? That'll be a tough game. I went to watch them on Tuesday. Um, they've obviously had a day's extra rest than ourselves. Uh, you know, they were comfortable after 20 minutes. Uh, you know, they didn't have to work too hard for their goals. Um, you know, but West Brom came back at them. Uh, they're on a, a decent run themselves. I thought they were fortunate at Middlesbrough, um, but they've put in some really good performances to go to Middlesbrough and Sheffield United and get them wins. So it's going to be a tough, tough game for us, but one we're fully looking forward to. Yeah, how impressed have you been with what they've managed to do this season and last? I suppose not everybody's choice at the start of the season. I'm sure in terms of teams who'd be up there. Yeah, no, they've, they've got good players there, you know, mm. so uh, when they've got good players, it always makes for a, a tough game. Um, you know, I've got quite a good record against Bristol City from the cha my championship days with, uh, with Brentford and hopefully we can take that into, into tomorrow. We saw your golf in hand in the week. How much would you love now to kick back Sunday night and watch uh, the final day, knowing we've won eight in a row? Well, if I'd have beat JT, it would be even tastier. Um, but he found a way to beat me just about. Um, but no, if we've got eight on, on the spin, then I'll be a very happy man Sunday night. Cheers, Dean. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Dean, are Aston Villa the best team in the championship? <coughs> oh, not at the moment, because there's four more teams above us. Um, on current form, we're doing well. Um, you know, but it's a, it's a season-long marathon, 46 games, and uh, you know, it's highly unlikely we're going to finish in that top two. Um, but we have to make sure we keep on winning games to finish in the top six. What's changed? I know Jack Grealish came back. You made him captain. You had that great result against Derby. But other <coughs> players seem to be performing better now. What's, what's changed from, say, seven, eight weeks ago when you were drawing at Stoke? I think there's a... I think the mentality of the whole place. I mean, we were missing some, some key players um, before, you know, and we've, we've got them back. We've got really good players come back from injury, come back from suspension. You know, uh, people like Albert Adoma scored scored his first goal against Stoke and then he's gone and scored a couple more since then. We've got goals coming from all over the pitch. Um, you know, and a belief about what we're doing. But for me, it's all about, you know, having good players come back at good times. Does that belief extend to promotions? Well, that's what we are, that was our aim before when I first came here and that's still our aim now. Um, you know, our aim is to, was to try and finish in the top two if we can't do that in the top six and then, you know, it's the playoff route and... Uh, you know, um, we're still not confirmed in there, so we need to go and win a few more games. I know it's a team game, the whole thing is, but you must still be pleased to get recognition as the manager of the month. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a nice thing. I mean, it's a, for me, it's a, a club thing. It's, you know, it's not just myself. It's the, the players who've performed on the pitch, the backroom staff who get them prepared to play, uh, my coaching staff who certainly helped me. Um, so that's certainly a team award, and it shows that you're doing something well as a club. Are you aware of the historical significance of the run you're on? Because eight wins hasn't been done for over 50 years. The all-time record at Aston Villa for league wins is none. You're getting into that zone, aren't you? Yeah, we are, but we can just take it one game at a time. Um, you know, we've never looked too far ahead you know, during this winning run, and uh, we'll continue to do that now. Um, we can't look ahead of any other game. Bristol City's tough enough there, a place below us, one point below us and doing well in the league, so we have to make sure that we, we concentrate on that. And with Leeds and Norwich still to come, a good barometer of, of how good this team can be before the end of the season and possible playoffs? Yeah, possibly, but as I say, you know, we've got Bristol City and then Bolton and then Millwall before we even get there. So, you know, for us, it's just concentrating one game at a time.